Hi guys, welcome back to another video of me teaching. And today I have a JEE -E advanced question for you guys. Now, I'm just going to say that this question is very hard and very challenging. So if you guys don't like questions that hard, you guys don't need to watch this video. So I'll jump straight into the question. Now, don't let this question scare you. It's just a limit of a big fraction to the power of x over n. So guys, don't let the power scare you. We can just take the lawn on both sides to let the power just go to the front. Well, that is actually what I'm going to do. I'm going to take lawn on both sides so that lawn of fx is just the lawn of a limit is just the limit of the lawn. So limit as n goes to infinity of, since the lawn property says we can take the x to the power of n down to the front, so it's just x over n times lawn of this. Okay, so from here, I'm going to take a little note. So, note that n to the power of n over n factorial is, the top is just n times n times n, all the way to n, n times, and then on the bottom is just n times n minus 1, all the way to 2, and then 1. Well, let's see, why don't we divide the numerator to the denominator? So, the new numerator is just 1, and the denominator is just n over n times n minus 1 over n, all the way to 2 over n, and then 1 over n. So, if we go back to the limit, we know this will equal to, I'm going to divide n to the power of n onto the denominator, so it's equal to the limit as n goes to infinity, of x over n times ln of on the top it's just all the terms without x n to the power of n and the bottom will be so i'm going to leave n factorial over n to the power of n and i'm going to write this first so it's just and then multiply by this. Now you guys, now you guys might be familiar. From here, we can write it into capital pi and blah blah blah. blah. But I'm not going to write it into this for your understanding. Now, how do we, how do we clean this up? Well, let's take a look. On the numerator, we have the single terms with no square. And let's look at the bottom. We have all these terms and they're squared. So the numerator, hmm, there's like a general form to this, right? It's like x plus n over r. So we need a r over n, right? And no square, it's just simply r over n. Now let's look at the bottom. Hmm, we already have this, so we need to do something with this. Well, here, to cancel out these terms nicely, we will need a square of this. So then why don't we multiply the top and bottom by this? So then, this will become squared, and the top will also be really good, because there's no square on the top, it's just this. So, why don't we do that? Oh, um, guys, sorry, um, I missed a square over here. Well, I'm going to continue on what I was going to talk, what I was going to talk about. So we multiply the top and bottom by this, so it will become. From here, we can take the x out, because this is a limit as n going to infinity. It has nothing to do with x. So it's x times the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n times ln of the top being 
we will copy all of these terms. And then multiply by this. And on the bottom, it will be, we keep these terms. When we multiply this on the numerator and denominator, this will just become squared. Now, from here, we can open the brackets, but I'm not going to do it in the typical way. I'm going to do it like this. Multiply the first term with the last term, and then so on, so on, so on. And I'm going to do the same for the denominator. The first term, multiply the last term, so on, so on, so on, so on. So, Let's clean this up. This is just x times the limit when n goes to infinity of 1 over n times ln of. So if we multiply this term with this term, it's just x times 1 over n plus 1, right? And then multiplied with x times 2 over n plus 1 all the way to x times n over n plus 1. Well, now let's look at the denominator. It's basically the exact same thing. It's just x times 1 over n squared plus 1 and then x times 2 over n squared plus 1, and so on, so on, all the way to x times n over n squared plus 1. Oh, um, I forgot the lawn, so sorry. Um, I'm just going to write it here. I, I hope you guys know that there's, a, um, that there's a lawn over here. So from here, this looks very weird, isn't it? It seems like I made it harder, right? But actually, I made it really easy. So there's a property, there's a very typical property in lawn where the lawn of products is just the sum of the individual lawns. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. And there are n of these terms, right? So then we can just make it into a sum from r equals to 1 to n, right? And then we just have to write the general form of this. And that's going to be easy. So it's just. You keep all of this, 1 over n, times the sum as r equals to 1 to n, ln of. The, the general form of the numerator is obviously x times r over n plus 1. And on the denominator, it's x times r over n squared plus 1. Now, once we have gotten to this step, we are so close to solving the question. Now, I'm going to tell you guys a very interesting property of limits, but I'm not going to explain it in depth. I'm just going to show you guys this formula. So, we have a little note here that the limit when n goes to infinity of 1 over n times the sigma when r equals to 1 n f of r over n this will just equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of f t dt now i'm using t here because we haven't we already have x here and i don't want you guys to get confused so we can use this formula in this limit to let it become the x stays the same because there is no x here and then it's the integral now from 0 to 1 of f t dt. Well, we see that here's r over n and here's r over n. So we just have to replace all r over n's with t. So it's just ln of 1 plus x t 
over 1 plus xt squared dt. And it's very obvious that this is calling for u substitution. So we can let u equal to xt. So t is 1 over x times u. So we know that dt is 1 over x du. Right? So I'll just write this back at the top. And this is obviously equal to x times the integral of the bounds. So when x equal, when t equals 0, u equals 0, and when t equals 1, u equals x. So it's basically the integral from 0 to x now, ln of 1 plus u over 1 plus u squared, and then 1 over x du. But we can't have x when there's a du, but look at the front, there's an x. So we can just cancel these out. And we don't need this anymore, so I can just erase it. So this is just the integral from 0 to x of ln of 1 plus u over 1 plus u squared u. So I'm just going to rewrite this, and don't forget that this is only ln of fx, not fx. So we know that ln of fx is equal to this integral. Okay, so what do we do from here? Well, if we look at choice D, Look, it's something related to this, right? So we know that the derivative of ln is the reciprocal of anything that's inside. But then it's kind of similar to this, right? So then why don't we take the derivative on both sides anyway? So then we have the derivative of ln is just the reciprocal of anything that's inside. But then we have the chain rule. We multiply by the derivative of what's inside which is just the derivative of fx. And this will equal to the right-hand side. If you use the fundamental theorem of calculus, then it will become ln of 1 plus x over 1 plus x squared. Now, let's look at choice D. It's very similar, right? But we're not quite there yet. So why don't we look at all the choices? What does that remind you of? Well, we have to look at the sign scheme of this curve, right? So then why don't we plug in some values, figure out where it's increasing and decreasing, so then we can figure out which answers are correct. And it's actually answers. It's not one answer. There are actually two answers, surprisingly. So if I rewrite this back at the top, Now, what do we do from here? What if we plug in x equals to 1 and see what happens? When x equals to 1, f derivative of 1 is f of 1 multiplied by ln of 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1, which is 0. Pretty good. Number 2. When x is smaller than 1. Now, you guys might be wondering, what if x is smaller than 0? Well, look at one condition of the question. x is greater than 0, so that can't be possible, so we just ignore that case. So when x is smaller than 1, we know that f derivative x equals f of x multiplied by ln of 1 plus x over 1 plus x squared. And when x is smaller than 1, the numerator is bigger than the denominator. Therefore, it's bigger than 1. So therefore, the ln of this is greater than 0, or it's positive. And obviously, f of x is positive. So we know that this is greater than 0. 
which means when x is smaller than 1, this function is increasing. Number 3. When x is greater than 1, this is the same thing. And when x is greater than 1, the denominator is bigger, therefore it's smaller than 1, therefore the ln is negative, and fx is positive, so therefore this is smaller than 0. Which means, when x is greater than 1, this function is decreasing. So, now we can look at the choices. Let's look at a. f of 1 over 2 is greater than or equal to f of 1. Think about it. That has to be false. When x is smaller than 1, we know that the function is increasing. So a would be correct if, instead of greater than or equal to, it was less than or equal to. So we know that a is wrong. Now let's look at b. f of 1 over 3 is less than or equal to f of 2 over 3. And we know that when x is smaller than 1, the function is increasing. So b has to be correct. Let's look at C. The derivative of when x is equal to 2 is smaller than or equal to 0. That has to be correct, because when x is bigger than 1, the derivative function is smaller than 0. So C is also correct. And our last choice, D. D is the easiest one, because we can just plug in x equals to 3 and x equals to 2 in here. So when we plug in x is equal to 3, then it's just ln of 1 plus 3 is 4, 1 plus 9 is 10, so it's just ln of 4 over 10, which is ln of 2 over 5. So I'm just going to write a thing here. This is when x is equal to 3. And when x is equal to 2, let's see, 1 plus 2 is 3, 1 plus 4 is 5. So it's just ln 3 over 5. And this is when x is equal to 2. And the question says that this is greater than this. But that's obviously not true. So we know that d is wrong. So the final answer of this JEE advanced question is B and C. And I'll just tell you, GEE advanced questions are insanely hard. It's because of this comment, which he told me to do. And I made this video because of popular demand. There were around a million comments saying that I should do JEE advanced. So I did it. And thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoy my videos, please consider liking and subscribing. If you want to master something, teach it.